is your marketplace. It's cold and flu season. Off, cold, sinus. That's why we're investigating popular remedies at Canada's top drugstores. You look at this, right underneath Benadryl. Benadryl. Like right underneath it. So we go Tylenol, Advil, Benadryl, homeopathy. What are you gonna think? We're also undercover testing pharmacists. I have a question about this product. Are you a pharmacist? Our focus, homeopathic products. Active pharmaceutical ingredient, sugar water, almost the same price. Think they're just like other natural remedies? Then listen up. Do you think people realize that some of these products are just sugar water? I don't think a lot of people recognize that. Do you? To find out, we're testing families. She's turning two in December, and Blake, how old are you? Four. He's 13 months. Two. Thousands of parents are out in Milton, Ontario, keeping their kids healthy the good old fashioned way. Just keep them active, keep them healthy, energized. We're upon the season of sickness, cold, flu, you name it. Have you dealt with it yet? My oldest just had two general, like, uh, viral colds. We've had our first bout, but I'm pretty sure the next round is going to be coming soon. It's so hard when they're sick. It is hard, which is why many parents reach for homeopathic remedies like these. So I've used this brand. I've used these brands. I'm very familiar with the day syrup and the night syrup. But do they really know what they're buying? When you think of homeopathy, what does it mean to you? Like natural resources available that are maybe not as refined. Holistic, naturopathic. The thing is, naturopathy is different from homeopathy. Ah, so okay. there's a different, yes. If you didn't know that either, you're not alone. Health Canada's own survey found 95% of us don't actually know what homeopathy is or how it works. That worries Timothy Caulfield, Canada's research chair in health law and policy. How does it compare to natural medicines? Because that's what people see it as. Unlike some, let's say, supplements, where there is a dispute in the scientific literature about how effective they are or whether we really need them, there's no evidence for this. I mean, this is like complete bunk. Let's break it down. Homeopathy has been around since the 18th century. The German creator believed the more you dilute an active ingredient, the more potent the treatment is. We're talking one drop in an ocean diluted until there's not even a molecule of active ingredient left. The thinking here is the water retains the memory of the substance used. So we're not even at the point where there are reasonable people could disagree about whether you need this. And these products aren't cheap. No, they're not. You know, think of the profit margin on that baby, you know, putting water in a bottle. <laughs> so uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not cheap. This is pseudoscience uh, at its worst. And yet that pseudoscience is being used to get these products approved and on drugstore shelves. Don't believe us? We proved it six years ago when we created our own bogus children's remedy and got it licensed as safe and effective by Health Canada. All it took was a trip to the library. So check this out. This is a book from 1902, a traditional homeopathic reference. We found information in here to make claims about our Nidon product that it could effectively treat fever and pain. Take a closer look. These references provide no actual evidence. It just cites certain ingredients and what they treat. And there's a long list. Some manufacturers claim there's also modern studies to back them up, but those have been rejected or debunked. We would have been able to sell this product to parents in pharmacies. This is, is a stellar example of where we are right now and why we need better regulation. Health Canada says they're on it. Soon after our investigation, Health Canada introduced new labeling rules. They say so people really understand what they're buying. 
Homeopathic remedies for kids cough, cold, and flu must now have this notice, which says this claim is based on traditional homeopathic references and not modern scientific evidence. They're now proposing this for all homeopathic products. But is it actually working? Cough and cold, flu-like symptoms, congestion. Before you put that down, I want you to just read the fine print at the bottom. Based on traditional homeopathic references and not <laughs> modern scientific evidence. I didn't even notice that. Not something that I've actively seen, given the fact I've used some of these. Oh. Is that clear enough? No. Obviously not. I probably wouldn't choose it. Does that change your mind about this description here now? A hundred percent. I'm a science policy researcher, and I've had colleagues who've been tricked by these labels. For Caulfield, it's evidence Health Canada's label needs a rethink. I don't think these labels appropriately inform the consumers. Typically, in pharmacies, you're going to see these homeopathic products next to other science-based products. Does that contribute to the confusion? It does contribute to the confusion. You're forcing the consumer to differentiate. And if there isn't clear, crystal clear labeling, I, I think it's nearly impossible for the, you know, the average consumer to do that. And that kind of confusion can have terrifying consequences. Any parent wants to do whatever it takes to make their kid feel better. Nevin Thompson is a father of two in Victoria, BC. He's extra cautious with his kid's health, especially after a scare brought on by a fever. My youngest son, when he was about 18 months old, had a, a febrile seizure. We noticed he wasn't breathing and then turned blue, and we're like, oh my god, what do we do? We picked him up, he's lifeless, and phone 911. Thankfully, uh, the fire hall came immediately, paramedics, uh, some police. His body had sort of shut down. Ever since that time, we always kept an eye out. So when Nevin's son spiked a fever again, a few years later, getting the right treatment was crucial. I was like driving around, oh, I can go to London Drugs. I was in a bit of a rush, it said like, like fever on it. It's like the packaging resembles or mimics uh, some, some other brands that actually have medication in them. This is what you bought. That's it. To Nevin's surprise, the product was homeopathic. If Health Canada licenses it, it's for sale in a pharmacy. I expect it's going to immediately do what it says in the box and reduce pain and fever for my kid. It shouldn't be placed near like regular or conventional over-the-counter remedies for cold and flu treatment. It's very confusing. London Drugs say they no longer stock Homeocan kids' pain and fever. Metro says they're pulling it too. When we reach out to all five major drug stores, they point out the remedies they sell are approved by Health Canada. Metro and London Drugs say they stand by their product placement while Shoppers Drug Mart says they'll be reviewing their display. Shoppers, Rexall, Metro, and London Drugs also suggest consumers talk to their pharmacists for advice. What do you think of that response? I would be curious if they would ever advise against not using it. Okay, let's try it. We're curious too. That's why we're heading into drugstores with hidden cameras rolling. We visit four major chains, 10 pharmacists in total. I have a question about um, this product. Are you a pharmacist? Yes. Yeah. What will pharmacists tell us when we ask about these popular homeopathic products for kids? My son, he's congested, mm -hmm. he's got a cough. Do you recommend it? I normally don't recommend homeopathic medicine. Some advise we take a pass. Yeah, I don't recommend it to you, that. But have a listen to what others say. Uh, would you recommend this? I would, yeah. I would just recommend that one. They tell us it's effective. Experts say that's against their code of ethics. If they're really having this conflict right now, then yes. Give that one to her. That yeah. would be safer. I asked the pharmacist, she's actually our beauty. Oh. Yeah, she said, yeah, you, you can get This is the safest one. So he's like really stuffed up. It'll help with that? Absolutely, for symptom relief. So if he finds that that is great, then absolutely, by all means. Wow. So that was a straight up endorsement. 
Should pharmacists be saying these things? I, I don't think so. The pharmacist should say, there's no evidence to support this, full stop. We didn't hear a lot of that. So it's based on traditional homeopathic references? Yes. But we did hear some interesting answers about that Health Canada notice. What it means is that these are more like a natural type of medications instead of the medications that you, the ones that are done in the, the lab, so no chemicals from this one stuff. I wouldn't know exactly what, what but if you look at the, the, all the ingredients that are listed here. It just helps to boost the energy with, you know, the natural stuff. It just helps the body to do its job. So this is a pharmacist, wrong about immune boosting, doesn't seem to really understand what homeopathy is. What does that say to you? It tells me that pharmacy schools <laughs> and the pharmacy regulators aren't doing enough. It also tells us that uh, regulators like Health Canada need to do more uh, in order to ensure that there's appropriate labeling and that even pharmacists have the, enough information to inform their, uh, their consumers. Ultimately, six out of 10 pharmacists recommend a homeopathic product. We reach out to the Ontario College of Pharmacists. They say they can't determine if rules were broken without their own investigation. Manufacturers, drug stores, and Health Canada say it's about offering choice. If you're going to make a choice, you want that choice to be informed. These products should clearly say that there's no evidence to support them. Yeah, so I'm probably not gonna be buying this. No. Tomorrow? Until then, these parents have a message for Health Canada and the drugstores selling these products. I think that there's certainly more that could be done. I think what we need to do is to be responsible. So I would hope that the body that's making these decisions to have them on the shelves are also doing what they need to do to make sure that the kids are safe and we're making sound decisions.